How's it going everybody? Lucian here, bringing you another tutorial video. Today's video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up TrueNAS. So if you need like a, a nice storage solution, maybe you want to do a Plex server, maybe you want to do like a database server, whatever other storage needs you may have, you want to access that all throughout your network and not just maybe on your computer. Or maybe you want to back up your computer to a network storage device. You're going to need a couple things. You're going to need a thumb drive and you're going to need a server or a computer that you can put this on. Let's go ahead and get started. First, we're going to go to TrueNAS.com. In this video, uh, I'm going to be showing you how to set up TrueNAS Core. There's also TrueNAS Scale, but we're not going to go over that in this video. So once you're at TrueNAS.com, what you're going to want to do is go to Git and then click on Download TrueNAS Core. It's going to take you here. And then you can join the community or you can just click on no thank you. I've already signed up. Once you click on that, it'll take us to the download page. And you're just going to click this giant green button right here that says download. And we'll go ahead and download it. For the sake of this video, I've already downloaded it right here. As you can see, the ISO file is one gigabyte. And then we need to make a bootable drive, which is like I said earlier, you need a thumb drive for this. So in order to make the bootable drive, we are going to use a software called Rufus. This is also completely free. We're going to want to just go down here and we're just going to download the latest version here. So let's go ahead and click on Rufus and click on yes. We're going to check for updates. I'm going to click on no. Feel free to click on yes if you want to check for updates. So now that Rufus is up, let's go to minus that so we don't have all this background noise going on. Now once you have Rufus installed, you want to go ahead and plug in your thumb drive into your PC if you haven't already. I already have. You can see it right here. Once it's in, it should automatically detect the thumb drive. Once we're there, we're going to select the drive and then for the ISO file, we're going to select the ISO file that we've downloaded from TrueNAS, which is right here. Click on open and then when this pops up, we're going to click OK. Then all we're going to do is click on start. This is just a warning about the data being destroyed, which we already know. So we're going to click OK and we're going to wait for this to do its thing. All right, as you can see, Rufus is done. We now have that bootable thumb drive. But before we get going to the next step, if you're not caught up with me, now would be a perfect time for you to pause the video and catch up. Okay, now that you have caught up, next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is take that thumb drive and we're gonna put it into our extra computer or server, or whatever you may have, whatever you wanna turn in to the NAS. You can plug it in there boot it up and you're going to boot from the USB drive. Now that we have booted into our thumb drive, the first thing that we're going to see is this menu right here to install or upgrade our TrueNAS. We got shell, reboot, and shutdown. So of course we're going to install it. So we're going to hit enter on our keyboard. We have no mouse here, so all of our actions are going to be keyboard actions. We're going to hit enter for OK. Now, for me, I'm running this on a virtual machine because this is how I'm able to show you the actual setup process. So your disks are going to be looking differently. Uh, for me, my initial disk that I'm going to install this on, I typically choose whatever the smallest disk I have available. And then once you select your disk, you can go ahead and hit the space bar and then we'll select whatever disk you want to install the operating system on. Once we got that, we're going to hit enter again to confirm that. And then we're going to hit enter again on this. It's just telling us that all the data will be uh, deleted if, the, if there's any data on it. There's no data on it that we need, so we're going to hit yes. And then here we're going to set up our root password. Make it whatever you want. Make it something that you will remember. Once we got that, we're going to hit OK. Once you're on OK, you're going to hit enter. And then uh, my server for this VM that I'm using is on older hardware. So in my case, I will be booting via the BIOS. If you're using a newer server or newer hardware, uh, you might want to use the UEFI. Then once the installation has been succeeded, you will get this message. 
and telling us to re to remove the installation media, so remove the thumb drive, and then we're going to reboot the system, so we hit OK from this. Once you get to this, you're going to use your arrow keys to go down to number three, and then we're going to hit Enter to reboot the system. And once we're here, we just wait. Once we are here, you can see down there near the bottom that has given us an address that we can access our TrueNAS system via the back end and be able to manage it. So let's go ahead and go to that now. All right, now that we are back on our main computer, we are going to go to the address that it has provided us. So in my case, on the, this address, your address will may vary. And then for the username, it's going to be root. And then the password is going to be whatever password uh, you provided during the setup. And then we're going to click on login. And then this is our dashboard of our true nas system so the first thing that we are going to want to do is create a pool so we are going to go to storage and then pools then right here we're going to click add pool and then create new pool and then for me since i am running a virtual machine my disk don't show up here if you're not running a virtual machine, your disk should show up here. I'm going to go ahead and click that so it shows on serialized disks. And as you can see here, we have all our disks. So we can do suggest layout and it automatically adds all of our hard drives over here. If you don't want to do that, you can always add or remove hard drives. You know, let's say you don't want these two hard drives for whatever reason, you can just Put them back over here if you don't want them in a, in a data set maybe you want it in a different pool but in this case everything's going to be in the same pool we're going to give that pool a name we'll call it tank and then i'm going to select the raid configuration um, in this case you can do whatever you want whatever kind of redundancy you want to set up um, but for my case, just RAID Z should be fine. And then I'm going to click on Create. And then we're going to click on Confirm. And then we're going to click on Create Pool. All right, now that our pool is created, so here we are going to want to create some data sets. So for example, let's add a new data set. We'll call this, um, we'll call, you can name it whatever you want, I'll call mine uh, main set. For me, I'm gonna leave all these settings as default. I don't need to change anything here. Uh, feel free to browse around and you know and play with whatever you want. Uh, go crazy, you know? learn, learn it. It's the best way you're gonna do it. It's just by, best way you're gonna learn it just by jumping in and playing with stuff. So we're gonna hit submit, and then I'm gonna make a new data set under this data set, and I will call this one, I'm a YouTuber, I make YouTube videos, so we'll call this one YouTube, so I can access anything I need access for my YouTube content, if I need to upload videos to it and edit it somewhere else on my network, uh, I can do that. So we'll hit submit. All right. And that is that. You can create uh, more data sets if you want, um, you know, however you need. After that, what we're going to do, I'm going to go to accounts. Uh, you can either set up a new group or some new users. Uh, for me, let's just do a group. We're going to add a group. I'll call the group YouTube. And then this, the sign authentication, leave that checked because that's how we're going to be accessing the drive. So we'll hit submit on that. And then that creates us a group. And then we're going to click on users. And then for here, you're going to add whatever users you want to be able to access uh, your shares or anything else. 
So let's just do Lucian as the name. That's going to automatically fill in my username as Lucian. You can do an email if you want. I'm going to leave that blank. I'm going to do a password. And then I'm not going to make a new primary group. Instead, I'm going to set his primary group to YouTube. And then I'm going to leave the rest of this as default. The only thing I'm going to change is the Microsoft account. I'm going to check that. And then I'm going to hit submit. Now that that user is created, we're going to go to sharing. And we're going to go to Windows Shares SMB. We're going to add one. In our case, I am going to be sharing the YouTube. So we're going to go down the uh, tree here, click on YouTube. We're going to click on Submit. Enable the service. Close. And then this is the uh, ACL for the data set. So we're going to go to configure that real quick. I'm going to choose restrict it for my case. I'm going to hit continue. In the group, we are going to select YouTube. Apply group. Everything else can be left the same. I'm going to hit save. So now, everybody who's within our YouTube group, whoever, whoever we add, for users in the YouTube group will be able to access this data set. So in order to access it, we are going to go to uh, uh, File Explorer here. For example, this PC, you can see what drives I have right here. We're going to right click on this PC. We're going to add a network location. And then from here, I'm going to click Next, click this, click Next. Then we're going to do the IP address of our server. So we'll do two backslashes. We're going to do the IP address of the server. And then we're going to do another backslash. And the data set is called YouTube. We're going to click on next. And then it's going to ask for the username and password. This will be the user and password that you set up for, uh, for whatever user you set up in the dashboard. So in my case, the solution. Password, I'm going to go ahead and run the credentials and then click OK. Then this is just a name. You can rename this if you want. I'm going to leave it as default. I'm going to click on Next. And then I'm going to click on Finish. And then you can see here that we are in the data set. You can even see the folder right here. So anyone who has, anyone we give access to from here. We'll be able to access our data set from right here. And that's pretty much the basic, guys. Um, there's a lot more stuff, obviously, to go down. Um, this is just really, I'm really trying to keep it basic for these kind of tutorials. Um, feel free to look around. That's the best way to learn other things. Like, you've got plugins. Uh, we're going to set our main full tank. Choose. Then you see that we have some plugins here. This is provided by iX System. So you can do Plex Media Server. You can do Nextcloud. If you want to make a cloud based storage, you can go to Community Plugins. From here, you have AdGuard, you got GitLab, and other things. Feel free to look around, play with things, learn it. I showed you the basics. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.